In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn an image like this into a streetwear design like this. And I'm going to reveal the easiest, most beginner friendly way to do this. So at the end of the video, you can create your own stunning streetwear designs. So without further ado, let's dive into Photoshop. So I'm going to start off with this image here. And I do get asked a lot about where I find images like this one that I use in my designs. And the three main sites that I use are called Unsplash, Pexels, and sometimes I use a site called Pickerel, which has weird vintage archived photos photos and illustrations and things like that. And all three of those sites are actually completely free to use and everything on them is copyright free as well. So let's drag this image into Photoshop and I'm actually going to give you an amazing shortcut here. So we're going to hold down control or command and press the apostrophe key. And you can see we now have this grid on our canvas, which is really going to help with the balance and also the symmetry of the project. So let's move that to the center, which is about there. So what I'm thinking right now is that the only part of this this image that I really want to use is this part in the middle. So I'm going to come up here and click the circular selection tool, or if we're feeling fancy, the elliptical marquee tool and holding down shift and alt, I'm going to drag out a circle from the center like this. And now I'm just going to come down here and add a layer mask so that we only have this circle in the middle. Okay, so next we're going to combine a few different effects together to turn this into this. And I'm going to be completely honest, I just spent way too long on this. So if you think it looks terrible, please don't comment telling me that it looks terrible. My mental health just cannot take it at this point. So to get this effect, I went to filter, stylize and find edges to get this outline type thing. And then I just inverted the image. After that, I added a very small amount of noise. So to do this, I went to filter, noise and add noise. And I just set this to about eight or nine. And lastly, I wanted to add a threshold effect, which is a very common tool used in streetwear design and clothing design and things like that. But the image right now is just too dark and it needs way more contrast. So I actually added a curves adjustment to bring up the highlights like this. And finally, we're going to come up to image adjustments and add the threshold to get this final effect. Oh, and by the way, I completely forgot to mention this, but if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description and you can download the assets that I'm using and things like that. So I want to create a white outline around this image. So we're going to come over here and select the ellipse tool. And I'm just going to create a circle around the image like this. And let's come over here and remove the fill and also add a thin white stroke as well. And you know what? I think another one of those would look pretty cool. So I'm going to come over here, duplicate the layer and just drag that out like this. And you know what? I'm actually going to do that a third time as well. So something I've noticed is that the image in the middle is very grungy and there's a lot of grain, whereas the circles around the image are a little bit too clean. So I'm going to add something called a displacement map. And I'm actually planning on making a full video about this. So I'll just show you this very, very quickly. So we're actually going to open up a brand new Photoshop project, and then we're going to drag in a grunge texture into this blank project. Now we're going to come up here and save this as a completely separate file, and then we're going to come back to our original project. We're going to convert these three layers into a smart object. And then we're going to come up to filter, distort and displace. And we're going to keep these values relatively low and click OK. And now in our documents, we need to select the other Photoshop file that we just made. And then we come down here and click open. And you can see that Photoshop has used that other project to add in these small details and this grungy texture to our layer. Now, I know that was very, very quick, but I am going to make a full displacement map video very soon. Okay, so I'm going to try adding some text that actually wraps around this circle. So this is actually really easy to do. We just need to create a brand new circle like this. And then we come down here and select the text tool. And you can see that if we hover over the circle, the cursor changes very, very slightly. So we're just going to click on the circle like this. And you can see that the text is automatically wrapping around the circle. So now we can just delete that circle. And let's make this text a little bit smaller. And for this one, I'm going to use an absolutely amazing font called Urban Case. And if I don't know what to type out for the text, I'll usually just steal some song lyrics or something like that. And there we go. I think that is looking beautiful. Okay, so now it's time to add in a second image into the design. And I'm thinking that I want some sort of mountain or something something to go in the background. And I'm actually going to try out this image here. So let's drag that into Photoshop. And I'm going to use the quick selection tool to make a very, very quick selection of the sky. And I'm going to come down here, hold down Alt and add a layer mask. 
and let's move that around there. So next we're going to be adding some filters. So we need to make sure that this is a smart object. And now I'm just going to come up here to filter and add a little bit of noise like this. And to keep things nice and cohesive, I'm going to add a threshold adjustment just like we did before. Oh, that actually looks good if, if I do say so myself. And you know what? Let's add a little bit of shadow behind the mountain just to try and add a little bit of depth to the design. So I'm going to come down here and create a new layer and using a black brush, I'm just going to paint very subtly behind the mountain like this. Okay, so I like how this is looking so far, but now I want to add in some typography. So I'm going to use the word vision. and I'm just going to type that out up here. And through the power of editing, you don't have to watch me scroll through fonts for three hours. And eventually I decided to go for this font called Allowing Freedom. And let's change the color to a nice faded red. Okay, so I don't really know how to explain this, but I want to try and add kind of a curve to the lower part of this text. And there's a really easy way to do this. So we're going to come back down to the text tool and we're going to click on this warp text option up here. And you want to be careful with this one because it can end up looking like 2008 Microsoft Word. So we're going to go for this option here and let's bring that up to about there. And it's kind of a messy way of doing it, but we can just drag the text down like this. Okay, so I'm also going to add some very basic text down at the bottom as well. So let's type out something like this. And I'm going to use a font for this called Monument Extended. And I'm just going to add a few more simple song lyrics down here as well. Okay, so one of the golden rules of graphic design is that sometimes less is more and you don't really want to keep adding too many things and you don't want to make things too complicated. So I'm going to completely ignore that rule and drag in yet another image into Photoshop and let's put that around here. Now I want to blend this into the design and if I was just working on a normal poster or something like that, I would just use these blend if sliders just to get rid of the darker parts of the image. But this doesn't really work because by doing this, we're creating loads of different shades of blue and then we're going to be printing all that onto a t-shirt and it just doesn't really work. So once again, I'm going to add a threshold adjustment and let's set that around there. And now we can actually use those blend if sliders to really quickly get rid of the black pixels. And now let's just convert that to a smart object. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a very thin stroke just to make this lightning stand out a little bit more. And here is the final design. So I hope that you guys found some of the tools and the techniques in this video useful. They're probably the most commonly used techniques for this kind of streetwear design. And if you want to download this streetwear mock-up and all of the original images that I used, I'll leave a link where you can go and download them for free in the description below. And that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.